Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of the Men of Steel podcast, where we talk about Superman and Superman adjacent topics. If you enjoy this clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your shows. The, Fla the Flash shows up in Showcase, what is it, Showcase 15? I forget which issue exactly. Uh, but it, it, anyway, the, the Flash shows up in, in his first appearance, at, or the Silver Age Flash, Barry Allen. And that's considered the start of the, the Silver Age of comics, um, so that launches DC's DC's line at that point. Um, so you get Flash, you get Green Lantern, you get eventually Justice League and Martian Manhunter. Well, Martian Manhunter than Justice League. Um, and at, simultaneously, the publishers for, uh, at the time, Timely Comics, or pardon, I think they were Atlas at this point, um, would regularly play golf with the, the publisher for DC, um, and they would talk about how like successful these books are going. And uh, they, the, so the publisher for Atlas went to his editor-in-chief and said, hey, superhero comics are really popular, especially team books. You have to do one. I am requiring you to do so. So this company that had been surviving on these like weird monster comics that they would do, a lot of kaiju kind of stuff. Um, so this, this editor-in-chief, Stan Lee, goes to his artist for his monster books, Jack Kirby, and they make the Fantastic Four, and then the comic company becomes Marvel, and there there it goes. And then this becomes the Silver Age, like, comics war, like, the, the real big two fight, because, like, the Golden Age didn't have an, a direct equivalent to DC the same way. So this starts, it's kind of like the 16-bit era with, like, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Uh, like, this is the real point of, like, competition between lines. There's still other lines out there, and people are doing books and so forth, um, but these two are going at it. Then we get to the 70s, and there's, like, there's a lot of, like, fan response to, like, the old Captain Marvel stuff. So, first up, Marvel Comics rushes the character of Captain Marvel into existence, uh, which is the Marvel version, which is like an alien spy on Earth, uh, so that no one, so that they can hold on to the name Captain Marvel, because at this point they're Marvel Comics, so they wanted the name to be locked down. Um, DC, wanting to get a hold of this character who had previously been so popular, does so um, and is not allowed to call the book Captain Marvel because of trademark issues. Not, it's not that they can't call the character Captain Marvel, and in fact, they can even say Captain Marvel on the cover. They just can't call the title of the book Captain Marvel or some variation of that. Um, so, like when they launch, when they relaunch a, a series of Captain Marvel books after testing the waters with a character called Captain Thunder, who is just Captain Marvel but with a sun design for some reason on his chest uh, and draws nature powers instead of Greek gods, but he like Captain he's from Planet? another Earth and he's. <laughs> well, he, so it's the same red design. Like, he looks just like Captain Marvel, except the sun instead of a, a lightning ball. But yeah, yeah, no. Uh, it's actually, it's more like animal stuff. So it's like strength of the bison and, like, swiftness of the hawk kind of thing. Uh, although I think a tornado might be in there. He's it's his, He has the acronym Thunder. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's like tornado, uh, hawk, uh, something, you know, like, something like that. Um, it, anyway, so they want to do a Captain Marvel book. They, they come up with this whole premise that... Uh, off screen, all of the, the major characters had been put in suspended animation. Um, and so th they come back. And so the world has moved on. But a lot of it, it's it's kind of like the snap in in-game where you know, a bunch of people are like taken off the board and then five years go on and then they come back. And now like they have to deal with their lives. So we're getting that situation here with now. But with like Billy and Savannah and like all, all these characters. And they decide to bring back Black Adam finally getting back to the character in question. Uh, so they, they decide that they want to have like an actual like real rival because Ibak, as as interesting as he was, is still like, is way more like a barbarian villain as opposed to a direct rival. Um, like Ibak typically wears pants and no shirt and has like a mohawk and is just like this big thug type character uh, who can, you know, go toe to toe with Captain Marvel, but it's like, it, it's just a, it's a particular vibe as opposed to like, okay, here's evil Captain Marvel. You know, it's the difference between Zod and Bizarro. And so, so they bring back Black Adam. I forget if they, what excuse they use, but it, it's like a resurrection type situation. Um, and, and from that point on, he becomes like a mainstay villain. Like he's very present in crossovers. Um, he shows up in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, and like in the background, cause he's just a villain. Like it's it, like, he's, he's the, he's a bad guy for Captain Marvel to fight who is on the same power level. And so there's some cool fights. Like Superman fights him a couple of times. 
Uh, there, you know, there, there's crossover. Yeah, there, there are some great Captain Marvel Superman crossovers from this like the this like seventies era because they could do stories where like, oh yeah, they're about the same power and they can swap villains who are used to fighting similar type ones, um, and they lived on different Earths. So like the story, and but but Captain Marvel had a means of traversing it by way of the Rock of Eternity. His magic meant he could go back and forth the same way fl- like the Flash can do a lot of world rea- like different reality stories because the idea is the Flash vibrates to travel between dimensions and can do it under his own power versus like Batman can't natively go to earth two. Like it requires a bit more. It's not like, it's not part of his usual world of how to do things. So there's all these like good Captain Marvel, Superman crossover stories. We get black Adam repeating because he's a big heavy hitter that can fight Superman. Like that's, there aren't that many characters in DC. So weirdly the fact that a lot of them come from the Captain Marvel franchise is Cool. I I find that fun. Remember, if you like the clip after you're done liking and subscribing, check out CertainPOV.com where you can find more episodes of the show as well as a ton of other great shows.